welcome to a special Dancing Gnome Brewery Showcase episode of... Brutal Battle. Yeah, so uh, as as people have been listening through the episodes, I'm assuming I will put this one in the right order of things. You would know that we were at the beach, we recorded with Kyle Norman, and while we were there, we did a special Brewery Showcase episode where Kyle Norman picked the brewery, uh, and it was Treehouse, and it was awesome. If people have not heard that one, you should go back and listen to it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, but at that time, he also gave me a bunch of beers. So some of what he gave me, he gave me four, actually five different beers from Dancing Gnome Brewery. And they're, people say they're out of Pittsburgh, but they're technically Sharpsburg, which I believe Sharps, Sharpsburg is like a suburb. It's like a suburb of Pittsburgh. Oh, the cat's already leaving. She was hanging out. She quit early. Yeah, she quit real early. So, um, so yeah, so he gave us five beers, different beers from Dancing Gnome. So I was like, oh, perfect. Um, I We've had a little bit of Dancing Gnome before. I know we've had it on, I think it was a Cellar Dive episode, and we had said that it was from Kyle Norman. So um, I figure, hey, we have enough beers. Let's do a showcase episode because this is a brewery that I know a lot of people have interest in. I've heard a lot of good things about. And we, we had a glass door, I think it was called, or glass ceiling I think is what the beer was called that we had by them that he gave us. And I remember quite liking it. <clears throat> Agreed. So we're going to get now, into Now, on the can, it says Pittsburgh. Yeah, I know it says Pittsburgh, but I think Sharpsburg is a suburb. Like a suburb Pittsburgh. or like an uh, area? It might be. Like kind of like a Somerville. Oh, no, Somerville's an actual yeah. city. and I don't know. But all I know is the research I was doing, it said Dancing Gnome open in Sharpsburg. And I don't, pretty sure they have not moved since they opened. And they say Pittsburgh. And I saw like on one of those Google Maps, like Pitts, it's like Pittsburgh and Sharpsburg's like right there. Oh, okay. So I assume it's just kind of like a suburb. So I cracked the first one. It is called Wishbone. It is 5% ABV. It is an American ale. Yeah. And that's all I know. So, just so people know, when they say American Ale on these, they usually mean IPA or something hoppy. Uh, a lot of times, it's a hazy IPA is what they mean, or hazy double IPA or whatever. So, they don't specifically call it out on their cans. I mean, I didn't find any... That's fine for me. I didn't find anything specifically saying that, like, on their website or in articles or anything, but that's just what I've noticed looking at their beers, is that they... Um, you know, they just say American ale, which usually a lot of times when you say American style of anything, it means hoppier than everywhere else. So when they just say American ale on there, it's an IPA of sorts or a pale ale of sorts. And so you would just kind of have to figure out pale ale, IPA, hey, uh, double IPA, triple IPA based on the alcohol. So based on the 5%, I would say that's just an IPA. It's like a straight IPA. So. Well, it does look very hazy. Yes. It looks like that New England style IPA people are all about. Hazy IPA, if you will. It's kind of it's yellow. On the yellow side, yeah. It's not. Very much not able to be seen through. Yeah, it's not as hazy as. It's on the middle haze level, I think, though. Sure. Yeah. It's not. It's not like the the pulpy, juicy. Yeah, it's not the like, ones that look like orange juice. Right. It's pulp, not like basically. super, super thick. Like right. when I'm looking down, like I can see. Um, All right. It smells good. like. Smells like a freaking hazy IPA, yeah. which smells good. I, I know I said it on an episode not long ago, but for me, hazy IPAs have like the best aromas. Yeah, they of always, like they do. any beer. <laughs> I'm perceiving, I know you, I'm getting a itchy nose. Um, I, I'm perceiving some bitterness on the nose, though. Yes, I smell a little bit of bitterness, but it's also like super citrusy, juicy. Yeah. I do feel like there's a slight, slight touch of pine in the very yes. end of each sniff. Agreed. That's what but I was saying. I feel like there's grapefruit, pineapple, mango, orange. Orange, yeah. It's just yeah. kind of like that citrusy, fruity salad type deal. Yeah. And it smells like there's, you know, a nice little sweetness to it as well. But yeah. All right. Going mm. in. It's super light. 
Well, I mean, a 5%, yeah. there shouldn't be too much of a body to it. It shouldn't be, like, super thick or anything like that. So Very sessionable. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is... Too um, easy. Flavorful, yet light. I think it's very refreshing. Yeah. This is more on the easy side as far as hazy IPAs go. Hazy by PAs? I thought I said hazy. I thought it sounded like hazy. Oh, though. maybe. I, I don't know. I'm tired at the moment when we're doing this. We just, we, we're we doing this when we just got back from the beach, like, the same day. So, we just wanted to drink these beers. So, we're like, oh, we'll <laughs> record this. But, yeah. Um, but, no, it's, um, yeah, it's on the lighter side. Like, flavor-wise, too, I feel like everything that we kind of said on the aroma is in the flavor, but it's, like, Dialed back. Like, way dialed back. And that's kind of one of the things that ends up happening a lot of time with hazy IPAs, is that that nose is, like, amazing, and it's, like, so vibrant. It's, like, jumping in your nostrils, and then you taste it, and it's, like, yeah, it tastes like that, but it's um, I don't very know. I muted. Feel like... It's good, though. I like I like how I easy like it is. this isn't as robust on the nose as others though mm-hmm. so yeah. i feel like for me the taste kind of matches the smell yeah i must be detecting some a little tartness i don't get that but um i do get a little bitterness on the end i'm definitely getting the bitterness I'm more getting... than i would assume from this style yeah but i like it yeah okay. uh the other thing is like with a lot of hazy ipas i end up getting Kind of like a yeastiness in there. Mm. You know what I mean? And this, I don't really get that so much. And I mm-hmm. think that's a great thing. Like, I you really like that. like that about this flavor pro- profile. Is that it's not like this kind of sludgy, yeasty yeah. thing going on. So, Well, because, I, like I mean, it. I, I kind of, just looking at it, I felt this, like this was going to be more of a clean. Yeah. This is just like an easy sipper with some nice flavor to it. Like, I, yeah. I dig it. I think okay. it's cool. Well, why don't you read more and then tell me when you want me to open this next one? So there is not a ton about right, dancing. You said they now. just opened. In they opened in October of 2016, so they're not even three years old yeah. when we're recording this. They're getting there. They're not far from it. But like I said, they they opened in October 2016 in Sharpsburg, Pennsylvania. So initially, apparently, the owner and founder Andrew Witchy. Uh, yes, W I T C H E Y. Oh. So like a witch, witchy. witchy. Um, Andrew Witchy. He originally wanted to have the brewery in in P- Pittsburgh, but when he started to kind of look around the the real estate company he was working with, were kind of like, you know, it might actually just suit you better for what you're looking for if you went with the suburb area. And then that's when they kind of found Sharpsburg, and he was like, oh, you know, this does seem like kind of a good option. But th- this is what I thought was super interesting about about his story here. A lot of times they're just like, okay, so we found this building, we bought it, and we started doing our thing. He went to council meetings and talked to people in the community in Sharpsburg to find out if a brewery is something they thought that, that community needed and wanted. Hmm. Because he said that when he did... When he built the brewery, he wanted it to be integrated into the community. He wanted the community to want it there, and he wanted to feel like it was part of that community. Mm -hmm. So I really liked when I was reading that there was this touch of, like, he literally reached out to the people in that community and was just like, do you want me to build this company here? Like, do Mm -hmm. you want this? Um, So I just really liked What do you think would have happened if they said no? Or did they say no? I mean, apparently they did not say no because of the way the story read, how he was like, it it was basically saying how he believed, for him, it was very important that he had the approval of the people. Right. So, but, you know, that is a good question. Like, what really would have happened if they were like, yeah, I don't think you should be here. Yeah, we're not not really interested. Mm -hmm. And, um... You know, as I was kind of saying in the beginning, it's it's a pretty popular brewery. It's actually done very well. And since then, there's been another brewery that opened in the Sharpsburg area called Hitchhiker Brewing, which I think they opened in 2017, maybe? I don't know. Hmm. I, don't quote me on that because I didn't do the research on Hitchhiker. All right. So moving to the next oh, beer. that's it. Okay, for real. Yeah, go for it. Wow. I don't have, like, a ton. What? It. It, what's his background? Okay, so... 
Well, I'll get into that Aww. after this. I'll get into that after okay. this. So our next one is Asteroid. And it is 7.2% ABV. It is also an American ale. So I don't know if this one... Uh, I don't know what the what the beginning range of technically double IPA is. I feel like this could be considered double. Ooh. There you go. I feel like this could be considered a double. So, we'll see. It looks thicker. And hazier. Don't you think? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It looks thicker and hazier, for sure. Oh, yeah. It definitely does look thicker. And it looks a little more orange. Whereas the, the Wishbone was more like a straight yellow. Yeah. This has, like, an or- it's It's still kind of yellow, but it's got mm-hmm. a significant See, orange now, tinge. I feel like this is, like, the orange juice. Yeah, this is more like it. Like what you're used to with them juice bombs. That juice, bro. But you know what? I feel like it smells exactly the same. Um, Only more robust. I feel like it's more... I know flavorful isn't the right word because I'm not tasting it, but... I think... I think there's an earthiness in the nose that is, okay. that is not there in the um, wishbone. Alfalfa? Yeah, it's a little alfalfa-y. Um, I feel like I get more of a pine presence in the nose than I got in the wishbone. But there is also that citrus. What type of citrus? I, I also feel like it smells sweeter than the mm. wishbone as well. There's more of a sugary note okay. on the nose. I mean, it's like a dialed-up version of yeah. wishbone. Also, yeah. I love the name wishbone. Yeah, well, part of that has to do with the fact there's a there's wow. a dog in our neighborhood <laughs> who we refer to as Wishbone because if people were when you were growing up, if you ever watched that show Wishbone about this talking dog, it's that particular type of dog, so we just call him Wishbone. We'll call him Wishbone. We 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 name a lot of people and things that we don't know. Yeah, like the gym is the oh, best place the to do we that. Have lots <laughs> of names for people at gym, but. How else are you going to know who you're referring to when you have to tell stories about what someone did at the gym today? <laughs> but I like Wishbone because, yes, there's a cute little dog in the neighborhood that we call Wishbone. <laughs> yes. Who doesn't know us. We don't even know the owner. But every time it walks by our place. But what we're going to try now is the asteroid. And it's not asteroid. It's asteroid. Oh. Which is interesting because the proper spelling of asteroid has an E in it. And this does not. It's yeah. asteroid. Yeah. Interesting, huh? Take note. Um, yeah. As I continued to sniff it, I it, like the the sweetness starts taking over more and more on the nose. Yeah. So I don't know how the flavor is going to be, but you already tried it. I already tried it. It definitely is sweeter, but I definitely think there's some bitterness. You know what? I was kind of perceiving as tartness. A lot sweeter. <laughs> I don't. It's effervescent. Um, okay. I see what you're saying about that, but it's not super carbonated, though. Yeah, I'm like, but, like, the carbonation is so fine. It's like, mm-hmm. no, you're right. It, it It is like a fine carbonation. I don't. You're not digging it? I, I don't really dig this. I just feel like it's really sweet. No, I like it. It's not bad. I mean, don't get me wrong. By by no means is this a bad beer. I just mean, in comparison to the Wishbone, I'm not quite digging it as much. I do taste a decent amount of pine in this. While we were saying we were getting a little bit of pine in the Wishbone, I'm getting a pretty decent amount of pine in the Asteroid. I'm so confused on the name. How do I say it? Asteroid. Asteroid. Asteroid versus Asteroid. So it's just asteroid. Asteroid. Not asteroid. Not asteroid. And people are like, why are you spending so much time on this, people? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. No. I mean, it's good. Um, it definitely has I mean, more of a body to it than yeah. the first one. I mean, look at all those tiny little bubbles. No, you're right. The carbonation is super fine. I agree with that. So this has a little bit of that yeastiness, like a little bit more than the first one, and it actually is it is a little bit more bitter as well, which part of that could have to do with the alcohol increase. Um, but, I mean, decent. Um, yeah, I get a lot of pine. I get a little bit of citrus. I like this. Decent. I noticed in all the, all the cans, they have the, like, 
crown, a mm-hmm. hop, and then a mustache beard. So the like the drawing style on it reminds me of what the the veil in Richmond does with their cans. That same type of artwork. It's very similar. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit more. So this brewery ended up becoming so popular within a year of it opening that they started running out of beer. So they had issues where they weren't even able to open certain days because they were like, we're out of beer. And to this day, apparently, they're brewing at capacity. So I don't really think they're distributing much. I think you have to go there if you want their stuff. And I know they're also doing can releases like a lot of breweries do when they're super popular like that. So they literally have these can releases where people line up, stand in line. Barf. Right. Hopefully Kyle Norman didn't have to stand in line. And if he did, hopefully it wasn't long. Um, But so thank you, actually. That reminds me. A big thank you to Kyle Norman Mm -hmm. for these beers because this is fun. But he's a heck of a guy. Yeah, he's awesome. Which I'm sure people can tell when he's on the podcast. But Uh, I have I should I need to listen to an episode with him. Sure. Or a lot of them. You can go back and listen to everyone with him. Good. It's not like a a ton, a ton. It's definitely doable. So, um, yeah, so what was I saying? Oh, yeah, so they do these can releases. If if you are interested, if you're within driving distance of Dancing Gnome, you want to check them out, you can go to their website, and they have a schedule of their can releases on their website, so you can figure out when you would need to go. Now, I don't know anything about how early you need to get there or how long you'll end up waiting in line on average or whatever, but check it out. So you had asked, what's And- Andrew Witchie's background, the yeah. owner? And- I'm sure he probably got teased a lot as a kid. Uh, like, that's wit- not... Like, bitchy, witchy. <laughs> probably not, but... I'm just looking for, I'm looking for dogs in the neighborhood no, because stop. I might see Wishbone. But we're recording. And it would be, like, serendipitous. Okay. Well, then you would have to name that beer your favorite. But, okay, so anyway... Do you want to know what Wish, his background is or I not? I do, but hold on. Wishbone is typically <laughs> walked by a man, but one time we saw him walked by a woman. Okay. And now we need to know the story. Look, this is off the rails <laughs> about <laughs> this stuff. It's related to Wishbone. I'm trying to focus on Dancing okay. Gnome. Give dancing them their gnome. due. Okay, so what right? is Witchy's background? Okay, so his background is digital marketing. Okay? What? So it may come as no surprise to you that... Prior to the brewery even being opened, he had created the branding for Dancing Gnome. He created the website. He created social media, and he had it rolling to kind of start some hype, some some, some brand recognition prior to it even opening. Huh. And it ended up being successful because once they did open, apparently there were a lot of people in the in the that community and neighboring communities who were kind of, for lack of a better way of saying it, like chomping at the bit to get at these beers, to give it a go. and Digital marketing. Well, because as far as I know, this was a brewery that was in an area where, you know, there weren't any other breweries, like, right there. Yeah. So there were a bunch of people who were like, oh, this brewery's going to be, like, basically in my backyard or close enough. So people got psyched. And Dancing Gnome, the name, do you want to know how he came up with the name? I do. So, really, it's nothing special on how he came up with the name. He apparently had, like, a bunch of different names that he was considering based off what sounds good, what, you know, what does he think will work marketing-wise. So, he decided on Dancing Gnome, but he says it embodies what the business is like. This is his uh, direct quote. It's a fun-loving but hard-working kind of vibe. It's about being relaxed but purposeful. So, you seem confused by that. How is a dancing gnome relaxed yet purposeful? Well, okay, think about this. What is the persona, the most popularly recognized persona of a gnome? A garden gnome. Well, gnomes in general are known as, like, being workers, like being diligent workers. Oh, in your garden. And so if it's a dancing gnome... <laughs> he's also having fun. Right. Right. Like, he's he's known to be a hard worker and, like, getting things done, but he's having a good time at yeah, it. Carlin like, is Woo. dancing while he's doing <laughs> this and, like, throwing up hand signs. Just saying. Huh. Okay. But there, there are the article... I want to know reading. what his other options were. Yeah, I know. But you're not, you hmm. know. Okay. Usually you're not going to find that information out, so... 
Time for the next one? Yeah, go ahead. I have to say, I'm kind of a little <clears throat> disappointed by this story. Well, I mean, to be honest, a lot of the brewery stories are going to be like this. Of the newer breweries, because... They just went in on the money. Well, I mean, it's a... Vi- not necessarily that, but just the fact that it's a, it's a, it's been proven to be a viable industry. It's a viable business model now. Whereas when you get the older breweries like a Sierra Nevada, right. like a Dogfish Head, you know, breweries like that, they're forging their own way yeah. pretty much. These breweries, I mean, they're forging their own way in the sense that, you know, they have to make a good beer product. They have to have good branding. They have to run things properly, all that. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's well-trodden territory is the issue. So So I guess, so do you think this brewery would have been as successful if they didn't have the marketing and branding? Um, yes, because of the beer quality. Because of the beer quality. I think. Do you, how did he, not having a background in beer... Where did he... I don't know. Oh. I, I couldn't find that information. Huh. And, well, this is the thing. It, it what, what I was reading, it didn't say anything about him being the head brewer. Oh. So I assume he has someone else he does the, as yeah. the head brewer. He went out and, and hired someone. Like, I know that was the case for Hysteria Brewing, mm. you know, down in Columbia that we really liked. You know, I saw... It was just like months before they were going to even open and they the brewery. Were looking for a they head were brewer. advertising for a head brewer, and I was and a lot of people were like, "Oh, this really doesn't bode well." But that's not you know that's not necessarily true. I mean, you know, there's more than just brewing good beer to having a successful brewery, right? You know, you need to have financing, you need to have branding, you need to have marketing, you need to have. But the beer has to be good. But the beer has to be... Well, yeah. But it, they all have to work together, though. Yeah. Yes, exactly. You but, can't just have... But you have to have all the components. Right. Because you thing, can't just so. have, like, good marketing, bring people in, because they're, they're not going to come back. Yeah. No. But, they're so, not. Anyway. Okay. So now this next one is called Paper Scissors. It yes. is also an American ale. Yeah. And it is 11%. Yeah. So triple IPA, basically. That's what we're getting. Yeah. That's... Triple hazy IPA. It looks... Even more orange. I don't know. I feel like it looks the same as... I think it's more orange than the asteroid. And it's very hazy. It's like super hazy. This is the smell that reminds me of Vaseline. Really? Yeah, it's a little petroleum-y. I like this nose a lot. See, I don't. It's, um... You don't get petroleum? it's, It's like pineapple, apricot... Orange. I mean, a little bit. I can't get past that. You don't get the Vaseline smell at all? I, I recognize what you're calling out as that Vaseline smell. It's a little petrol-ish. Yeah. But it doesn't bother me. See, I don't... That's one of those... You know, everybody has, like, their smells or taste that's so off-putting. And once I smell that, I'm like, eh. So, to me, that hits it hits me as kind of like a, that dank hop, yeah. hop note. Yeah, I don't... But without a ton of bitterness, because it's a hazy IPA, like, it strips it down and makes it more that type of smell that you're talking about. So, but I think this smells really good. I think it smells like mosaic citra, like, really juicy, flavorful, awesome hops. So, I'm interested to see what you think it tastes, what your taste is. Hmm. Sweet, once again. It's like... I, I think it went up even further in sweetness, actually. I think it's, like, so sweet. I feel like it kind of, like, coats my teeth. Yeah. With sweetness. There is a coating. Um, I don't... For me, this just doesn't... I just don't want an IPA to be 11%. I, yeah, I agree with that. That's not the style. And it... Uh, it just doesn't do anything for me. I kind of... Okay, so here's the thing. I kind of feel like high a like really high ABV hazy IPAs do a disservice to that style because the alcohol is much easier to perceive in a yes. style like that because you don't have the bitterness to take care of that. A lot of the times bitterness can kind of mask the alcohol at least for me personally when I taste things. And with this one like there's some bitterness but it's not enough to mask that alcohol like you know this is an 11 percent beer yeah. i mean it definitely um so i don't know yeah i mean you definitely it 
feels very boozy. Yeah, it's really... I don't know, when I'm drinking, like, a high ABV beer like this, I just don't want it... Yeah, like you said, I don't want it to be an IPA. I want it Mm -hmm. to be, like, a barrel-aged stout. Yeah. Or... It's... And in comparison to the first two beers, it's thick. But honestly, I don't think it's as thick as I would assume it should be for an 11% beer. And that's That's actually, that's actually a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like it makes it easier, actually potentially a dangerous thing because it makes it easier. But I just, yeah, the booze, like I like the flavor profile, but I have to get through the booze to get there. Yeah. Yeah. And that's my gripe with this beer in particular. If you take this flavor profile and you take the booze way down. Then you have asteroid. Then you kind of have asteroid. <laughs> there, there are a lot of commonalities between mm-hmm. these beers. It's interesting to do the three of these, boom, 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 because you can see the similarities and also yeah. some subtle differences. Um, I'm starting to acclimate to it a little bit more as I'm I sip a- it. I'm acclimating more to the sweetness, that's for sure. And I think probably the well, booziness. Sweetness also the booze. Um, and like I was saying, like this body is making it easier. And it, yeah. I mean, it, I definitely... I, I went from my initial f- first few sips being like, yeah, I don't know how I feel about this beer, to being like, actually, I kind of dig this. I kind of dig this beer right now, mm. so. Um, I see why people would like it. Yeah. Like, I feel like a lot of people are just like, whoa, I just want something with a lot of booze. Yeah. I get you. Well, they don't... I just uh, really prefer the first two much more. Yeah. Mm. So hear me out on this. At this juncture, there there's a pretty consistent flavor profile with the oh, with yeah. the first three beers we did. I didn't know that was necessarily going to be ca- the case, and part of the reason for that being they don't have the information on here of like what Everything ingredients is. they're yeah. using, like what's their grain bill, like what are what hops are they using? What's their steez? What's their steez? Exactly. So I kind of feel like. We're not offering a whole lot, so did you just want to go get the lager as well and I just open were, that? I knew it. You know what? As soon because as we, it's different style. As soon as we sat shows down, range. As soon as we sat down to record, I thought, you know what? I know something's going to happen. He's going to pull out that lager, and when we were deciding what to do, I thought we should probably take out one of the hoppy ones and put in the lager for something different. But you didn't say I that didn't to say me. That. <laughs> so I didn't say it because I was like, "You do you." Yeah. Well, I always ask for okay, your well, input. Go so. get the lager before we open this last one. Can you go get it? Because I can talk about things. You don't have the info. I have the info. Oh, geez. Okay. So the re- so we're probably the last two beers. We're just going to go boom, boom. And the reason I want to throw the lager in there is because I think we're doing a bit of a disservice to the brewery if that's true. Awful. We have it and we're not doing it because it's a showcase. Yes, exactly. Um, and the last one, it's a stout. Although I will say, as Rebecca goes to get that beer, that the majority of what Dancing Gnome does and what they're known for are their hazy IPAs. Like, that's their thing. As you can tell by the fact that, you know, what we have is three of these. And initially when I was putting this lineup together, I was thinking, well, we'll do the three hoppy beers and then we'll do one thing that's not hoppy because they're mainly known for the hoppy stuff. It's on the bottom shelf. Bottom shelf. It's gold. It's in one of the four packs that's upside that's laying on its side. It's got a gold. Yeah. There you go. I want to really just go get it. Sorry. Because we only have one beer in our fridge. That's right. We have we only we do okay, we have like three beers in our fridge. So that's why it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> no. Marlon's like, go get find this one beer when our entire fridge is filled with beer. That's true. Oversight, like, but you know. Yeah, and but, it is, hold on, and it's in a four-pack container laying on its side on the bottom <laughs> shelf where I can't even see it. Yeah, all you can actually see is the, the plastic of the four-pack holder. But anyway, um, real quick, before we do that, because, I mean, we're already talking about the makeup the, of their beer. Yes, like I was saying, the majority of what they're known for are these hazy IPAs, but that's what's popular, that's what sells, it makes sense, but it just made... It just made sense for me to do the hoppy beers, but we have the lager, so we're going to do it. Um, so while Rebecca pours these lager for us, or the lager for both of us, um, they do they do have other beer styles, and to figure that out, 
I looked at Beer Advocate because they don't list things on their website of like these are all the beers like some breweries do. So I looked on Beer Advocate and they happen to have stouts, lagers, saisons, cream ales, and even sour beers. I saw some oh, sour really? beers on there. So okay, flavor range. Yeah, they do. But but looking at the website, they have on there this is what's on tap at the brewery right now. So when recording this, they have eight beers on tap. Two stouts, one pale ale, three regular IPAs, and two double IPAs. Oh, okay. So eight beers, six of them hoppy, two of them stouts. So not much variety. But at the same time, like we've said before, I can't really blame breweries for that because if it sells, it sells. And like we talked about, they're definitely selling their beer. (laughs) They have no problems. This can is sexy. It does look good. It does look it's really like good. Gold and black with some white accent. It's almost like, uh, like a real expensive gold plated tuxedo. It's like um, looks very fancy. This looks like a hazy lager. It is unfiltered. Called Lager Lustar. Lustra. Lustra. Or Lustar. L U S T R A. But Stra. the important thing to note is that lust is in the name, which is probably why you felt that can look sexy. Yeah, I, I'm really lusting after it. <laughs> well, hopefully, um, we lust after the actual. It is beer. 5.8%, and it's an American lager. American, probably hoppy. Um, it is. Yeah, it's hazy. It's it, unfiltered. I mean, yeah, I would say this. it looks like a hazy IPA. It looks yeah, like Wishbone. Yeah, it does. It looks like that wishbone. <sighs> it smells good. I love the smell. Oh, yeah. So I do smell a little bit of an extra hop character in there, hence the American style. Mm. But it also has that really nice lager crispness know, on the yes. end of the nose. This actually smells really mm-hmm. awesome. It does. It just smells so crisp, clean, refreshing. Yeah. Crisp, clean, but with that little accent of the, the hoppy citrus. Weedy. Yeah, kind of. Well, Maybe like straw. straw. Jinx. Yeah. It smells really good. I really dig the smell of this. Very easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not as flavorful as I would like, but I do quite enjoy it. I like the light, how light it is. Yeah. It's got a nice light body. I feel like the end is giving me a menthol burn in my throat, which makes me assume that they're using, like, cryo hops, Uh, like that hop lupulin powder. I thought you were going to say that. That stuff stuff does that to me, and for that reason, I don't really like that. I like the flavor profile on this, though, but if you have a problem with that lupulin powder, like, menthol burn... I don't get that like you do. I did. maybe I'm just very. Sensitive it's just like to one it. of those. It's one of those things that, like I was saying, everyone has their thing that they perceive. like you and the vassal. Yeah, it's like ugh. Yeah. Um, I like the flavor profile. In this I thought though. you were going to say at the end it's giving me a boner. No, not quite. Um, there's a little bit of an orangey note peeking through in it from that you know American hopping. I mean, but for the most part, it kind of tastes like a clean, easy lager. Um. I like it. I think it's good. I just, I want, I want more of something. It's not given. It's not delivering for me. You want it to kind of pick a direction more? Do you think? Yeah, I don't like hay straw, something like that. Like hay straw, citrus. I do. I'm definitely getting that. I, I mean, it's like, in there. Like, there's a little bit of honey. There's yeah. a little bit of like a straw note. There's a little bit of that orange that I'm talking about. But it's all very low. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all very low grade, but I think that's what I like about it because it's very easy and those notes are there, but you can kind of choose to ignore them if you want yeah. to. You got more info? No. Oh, that's it? Yeah, that's that's Man. legitimately okay. it. I told you there wasn't a ton. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to... Let's finish it out. The fifth one. And this is a stout. This is a stout. 4.8. Very low. So straight up stout, not imperial. Suada, S U A D A. Sua. Or maybe Suada. Suada. I think sure. I would say Suada. Sounds better. Say that. Wait, does it say American stout? No. Okay, just stout. 
Because everything else is American. The logger yeah. said American. This is not American. It's all American. American something. It's not American. That looks thicker than a regular stout when you poured it in yours. Don't you think? I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention. Okay. So let's... Yeah, it looks imperial. Like, the color is very, very dark. And that head... That head is very brown for just a straight stout. This smells amazing. In what way? Take a sniff. Whoa. There's a lot of coffee. It's... I don't think there's... There's not coffee added say. to it. doesn't say. Oh, you know what? Maybe there is coffee and they just don't say it in this. See, that's a problem with this. Because like, Kyle Norman wouldn't like it. Tell me. I mean, I can look it up. Let me, yeah, let me look There's, it up. And yeah, see. there has to be coffee added. I yeah. don't know. It's There's so much coffee in that news. Yeah, it has to be. Well, maybe not, though. It is just so, it is just the perfect harmony of coffee, chocolate, and I'm getting like a chocolate malt. Sure. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. And it's like multi roasty chocolate, uh, coffee. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if it's just the malt makeup, babe. Someone said it's a coffee stout. Oh. Online. Well, that's just because maybe they... They think. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I can't find anything to confirm that it is. You can't confirm nor just... Oh, no, wait. Here we go. Breweries in Pennsylvania have Vietnamese coffee milk stout is what it is. It's a Vietnamese coffee... Why would you not say this on the can? This is actually a big-time gripe. For someone who's has a background in digital marketing. Like you have a marketing background. You should know you got to put that information on there. It would okay. It would draw more people to the yeah. beer. But I also realize as I'm saying that they're not having a problem selling their yeah. beer. So I guess they it's not necessary. It's just like a Carlin would like you to do this. So don't but, listen to me. Andrew Witchy, if you then, hear this, just don't listen to me. It's fine. But here's the thing. It didn't you would be drawn to this beer anyway. Because it's a stout? Well, because it's dance that you want to be, like, trying. Well, no, if it just says stout. A lot of people pass on straight stout. You need to, like, the fact that this is a Vietnamese coffee stout, that's a huge seller right milk. there. That's a, gr oh, yeah, milk stout. The milk stout portion of it is a big seller. The coffee portion of it is a big seller. But what does it smell like? It smells like very roasty coffee. I'm sorry. Roasty I was trying coffee, to look up. chocolate malt. That coffee's like crazy strong though. There is a chocolate that I can perceive in it, but it's kind of low. Like really low, because that coffee dominates. But I will say the coffee is actually giving it a nuttiness as well on yeah. the nose, which is interesting. I really like this beer. Because Oh, there's a little, yeah, there's a little sweetness on the end. Yeah. For 4.8%. Mm. Oh, yeah. It delivers such a robust, satisfying yeah. taste. Mm -hmm. um, wow. It feels like mm. more because of the layers of flavor. Um, it's an end, it's not too thin. Yeah. I feel like a lot of straight up stouts are too thin. I guess it is a milk coffee milk stout whatever it is um but just again it's not imperial it's i really like this beer yeah i i do agree with what you're saying it is impressive that the body is what it is at a under five percent mm -hmm. beer a lot of the time straight stouts are very unimpressive because yeah. they're thin and this is not that so yeah and the coffee is really nice in this it mainly hits you up front and then it kind of dissipates a, yeah. to this really nice sweet milk chocolate but it's not too sweet like that's my also beef with some of the milk no, it's stouts not too sweet. um it's been a little bit too sweet um it's got a little bitterness on there yeah too. i really like this yeah this is really well crafted this is good and that nuttiness i was talking about getting with the coffee yeah. like it's in there it's very I think it's nice. a little like hazelnutty mm -hmm. that's a perfect point yeah i think it's definitely a hazelnut like wow okay all right Good job, buddy. Yeah, it's good. Good job, buddy? Me? Good job, buddy. Yeah, you. Or the beer? No, you. Oh. For picking out the hazelnut. Oh. I'm like, are you talking to me or the beer? Yeah, you. Me? Mm -hmm. You give me a compliment? That's not the only time I compliment you. 
just choose not to pay attention to most of them. Normally when I say things, you do the, sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah, but that's because I'm already thinking about things oh. is the problem. Okay. Like, that's my quick acknowledgement, and then I also have something to say. Um, hmm. Uh, so I have to taste through these hoppy ones real quick to yeah. understand where I am. I, I, I'm, I know what I'm doing. It's not easy. Man, that triple IPA one is sweet now. The paper oh. scissors. That's sweet. Let me have a little sip of that. It's in comparison though. Have a to everything else. Ooh. It's like and it and it's coming off like real piney too. Right now. So it's just it's kinda like I don't know, it's kinda like sweet mango in a sense. Yeah. Oh, and I don't think we said these are all sixteen ounce cans. Oh yeah, I don't think we said that, but when I mean, I know a lot of people probably made that assumption we were talking about them doing can releases. Yeah, well, usually can releases are sixteen ounce. So. Wow! Well, but you know, you never know. Mm-hmm. Truth. Okay. Ooh, this is tough. This is. Mm, mm, this is a tough one. I I definitely know my first and last. It's the three in between that my issue is. You know your first. Yeah, I know my first and last. Mm, mm, okay. Let me sip that one again. The lager? Mm-hmm. The lustra? Are you lusting after sipping that again? I want to like you more, lager, but... Okay. I just don't. Okay. Do you have your order? I do. Okay, go ahead. Okay. My number one... You want to guess? The suada? Yes. Stout? That coffee stout? Yeah, it's really good. Suwada is my number one coffee stout. My number two is Wishbone. Okay. The, what we think is just IPA. Number three is the Asteroid. The, what we believe to be a double. Um, then I'm going to say the Lager. The Lustra Lager. And yeah. then the Paper Scissors. And then the Paper Scissors. Okay, I got it. Okay, so for me, I'm going to go la- uh, No, I'll do the same way. I'm sure people could tell Suwada is also my favorite. It was a... Oh, yeah. Okay. How did you not get that? I, I raved about that one the most by far. Yeah, the Suwada. That's my number one. My number two is the Wishbone. Oh, damn you. I like when we don't agree on number one and two, so we don't have to fight over the beers. Oh. Well, hmm. that's what it is. So number one and number two are the same? That means yeah. we're going to fight over them? Number two, Wishbone. My number three is the Lustra Lager. Oh, Okay. I like that. And I had a hard time making a choice for that two slot between the Lustre and the Wishbone, to be honest. Oh. Because they're pretty close for Really? Me. Yep. Okay. My number four is the Paper Scissors. Uh, I think... And that one... And, your and the Asteroid is my number five. Interesting. Because I felt like the more you sipped on the Paper Scissors, like, you could get past the alcohol, you could get past that sweetness, and there was, like, a nice, robust flavor profile there. Mm-hmm. And I felt like the Asteroid wasn't as much of that. It kind of fell more into See, a no-man's land with things. I just don't. I didn't want to have to sip to get past things, though. I just want to enjoy it. Well, I mean, that just naturally happens, though, when you're drinking yeah, a beer. Um, we'll see. And it's always funny, because once we rank things on podcast, then as we continue to drink, like... Now, no? I, I just retasted the Asteroid, and there's just so much sweetness that comes through in oh. that. that and, okay. and not a whole lot, of, to be honest, not a whole lot of flavor profile to back up the sweetness. Or to downplay the sweetness, really. The sweetness gets out of control. There's a lot of sweetness in the paper scissors. Rinse but, me. Let me taste it. But it's, you know, there's, there's flavor there, too. Yeah. So, I don't know. Asteroid, to me, I'm not huge on. But, this has been fun. And this is a yeah. fun lineup. And it is good. That's we're gonna fight over that Suada. Yeah, we will. Although I'm I'm pretty sure you'll let me just have the Lustra. Yeah, you can have I, that. And one. I quite enjoy that, so that's great. And he, like I was saying, like once things kind of warm up and we a sip on things, we yeah. do change our mind a little bit. So. Well, and also we're gonna have dinner, so like beer with food sometimes changes your palate. You want different things with different things. Like, that luster is probably going to go really well with the salad. Because I got a um, spicy Thai chicken salad from Panera. So, with that spice, <laughs> I'm going to want a nice, like, clean beer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you re the Asteroid. Your thoughts now. I still like it. 
Okay, that's good. Well, that's yours. You take the asteroid, I'll take the lustra. I don't... I, I still might want something. <laughs> no. Okay, uh, we'll find out. Yeah. Anyway, once again, um, well, good job dancing gnome. Awesome. Uh, maybe one day we can make it up there. Check you out. Uh, also, huge, huge, huge thanks to Kyle Norman, who's a, an awesome guy, provided us with these five beers. You are the man. So, awesome. Anyway, thanks, everyone. Uh, just so you know, there may we may be doing a bunch of Brewery Showcase episodes just because we happen to have uh, a bunch of beers from a few breweries. So, forgive us if you don't like these types of episodes because we're going to be doing a bunch. But anyway... Thank you so much for listening, and until next time, keep it brutal. This has been a Nerd Circle podcast production. 